In many ways, from the research point of view, a very exciting uh, time, and, and I think for sufferers, very um, a time of great hope and optimism, that we, this sort of research is just bearing fruit at the moment in terms of identifying variants in genes that we can be confident play a role in influencing susceptibility to illness. And so that is actually going to start to give us much better understanding of some of the key mechanisms in the brain uh, that are involved and that will help us to go on to develop uh, improved approaches to diagnosis and of course ultimately to treatment. I should point out that we know there are going to be many genes involved, this is just the start and there's a, there's, you know, there's a long way to go yet and it's really crucial that we have as many people involved in the research as possible to turn this um, excellent beginning into real changes for, for people with illness and bring it through to changes in the clinic to improve services. We're currently the largest study in the world looking into mood disorders. Um, we're looking to recruit 6,000 people to take part. We're looking at genetic factors that make people more susceptible to experiencing mood disorder or experiencing mood symptoms across their lifetime. We visit you in your home for a one-off interview, and that just lasts about an hour and a half. Hello there. Hi, it's Jackie. Before the interview, we'll just send you out an information sheet telling you a bit more about the study. Um, so at the beginning of the interview, we just ask you to fill out um, a consent form to say that you're happy to take part and that you're happy with all the points of the study, and obviously we give you a chance to ask questions at that point. So during the interview, we just ask you about the types of mood symptoms you may have experienced in the past, any medications that you may have taken. We also like to just get um, a life chart to see how your illness has perhaps mapped out across your lifetime. We ask in detail about any episodes of high mood, any episodes of low mood, and also some more unusual symptoms that some people with bipolar disorder or mood disorders have experienced. And how long was it after you had your son that you went into hospital, can you remember? About a fortnight. About a fortnight, okay. For women, we like to ask about any postnatal mood episodes that you may have experienced. And we also like to ask about a person's family history to get an idea of any other family members that may have had similar experiences. We ask about drug and alcohol use across your lifetime and also um, about any significant events up until the age of 16 that you may have had. The reason I volunteered to take part in the research was that there's so little that's uh, known about mood disorders. Why does it affect some people? What are the best treatments? What's the likely course of the illness? That I wanted to do my bit to answer some of the questions that are still left and um, I wanted to make a positive use of my experiences. There we go. And if you could just keep your arm really straight forward, that's fantastic. Also as part of the study we take a small blood sample from your arm, which the interviewer will take when they come to visit you, they're fully trained. It's just two small vials. It's been a pleasure taking part. Um, I was a bit nervous about having my blood taken, especially at home, but that was great, it went really smoothly, I didn't feel a thing. Uh, better than at the doctor's actually. When we go, we leave you with a set of questionnaires and in that we're just looking at perhaps more personality factors or other significant life events that may have had an effect on the course of your illness for you to fill out and send back to us in your own time. Bye bye, thanks Thank you. Bye. Because obviously mental illness is very complicated, it affects different people in very different ways. Um, it's very important that we see a large number of individuals. And in fact, at the moment, our target is to recruit uh, about 6,000 people who have bipolar disorder into the study. And we believe that should give us sufficient power in the study to um, go a long way to identifying some of the important causes and triggers of illness.